Well, welcome to the sewing blast. Yay! <laughs> and Pingeli with Dual Design. <laughs> and we have our special guest and fashion illustrator herself, Miss Laura Valpentesta. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. So happy to meet you guys face to face. Yes, it's very nice. Oh, we've got more people coming in the room as well. So it's lovely to have you guys to join us. Lots of Perry crafters. Yes. So everyone knows Alethea um, of so much talent. She's also one of uh -huh. the organizers. Only one, though. Didn't you say there was three people that work on the Facebook group, the Perry crafters? Yes, there's three administrators on the Perry crafters uh, Facebook group, and that's uh, Karen Baxter, mm -hmm. and that's uh, Shonda Brock. Okay. I live here. Good to give them a shout out. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's such a great group. I love that group. Everyone's so creative, making stuff all the time and sharing it. And I love that. Oh, what was that? I just saw a little, I just saw something. Uh, I was just, so once in a while, I might kind of zone out. That's another reason why it's awesome why Alethea is here. It, to do some things like, um, I want to grab the Perry Crafters uh, link and stick it in there. So I'm searching on my other monitor to find it. So sorry if all of a sudden, instead of talking to everyone, I go, I get a weird stare and stare off into the distance. <laughs> so, Knowing um, how to sew isn't enough. We have to learn all of this stuff too. <laughs> I know there's so many, so many different layers to it, isn't there really? Um, right. And I think it's interesting to explore and hopefully we will further, like, you know, if you just want to sew, just sew, but if you want to get uh, more your stuff seen or be able to ask questions of very intelligent people, like on the Perry Crafters group, then you have that, you have that option. Or if you want to watch Andrea at Sew to Fit's YouTube channel, you know, so knowing enough about computers can actually, you know, more about computers can help your sewing. It's, it's nice. So, yeah. It's social. S E W. Social. <laughs> yep. We're getting social. Social place. <laughs> we are getting. Yeah. So our Any questions. Our guest tonight, Laura. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Like, what is your your background and? Yeah, sure. interesting. Yeah, one of the reasons I met both of you is because I'm crazy about fashion, um, both the making and the craft, and um, and then illustrating and design and drawing too. So I went to school for fashion. I graduated in 1995 from Parsons School of Design, and then in '97 I went back there and I started teaching pattern making. Was my first class. I was pretty terrified because <laughs> I hadn't been working in pattern making, but. Teaching, as they say, I mean, I'd already taken it, but teaching something is you learn so much when you start teaching it, right? So I loved that. And actually, I'm always really intimidated on our Perry Crafter group when I see all the pattern envelopes because I'm so afraid of, of buying patterns anymore because they never fit me. <laughs> they never oh, no. fit. And I haven't used one since like I, I don't know if they're easier to fit now than they used to be or if it's still a struggle for home sewers to get a, a pattern they buy to fit is it no you, you cannot get a pattern to just fit out just right out of the box right out of the bag rather you know and that's where Andrea comes in people like Andrea because they, she teaches you how to fit um, there's very rare and that can pull a pattern out of the box and just go from beginning to end. I mean, I would love to learn how to just put something together without going to the pattern because you cut out a lot of steps, mm -hmm. you know, doing that. So, well, yeah, you, well, you know, in a good way. Well, it's so beautiful <laughs> that that's the thing is they hide all the stitch lines on the pattern. So you can't, you can only see the cut lines. And so I wouldn't even be able to buy the right size. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't even know which size pattern to buy. It was so frustrating. But now I always know, you know, if my hips are this big, my pattern has to be at least that big, if not more. And, um, and I don't buy them anymore. So I give everyone a lot of credit. I also know that that paper is so delicate. And it's like you use it <laughs> once and it like disintegrates. <laughs> I get so mad. <laughs> I used to call it onion skin. I don't know what they call it anymore, but it used to be called skin. Do they still call it that? I think 
in fact, I think onion skin is more durable than that paper that they make patterns on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, maybe that's what they call it. I like to use, my dad is a physician and you know the paper that they put on the, the table that the patients lie on? I use that for patterns. <laughs> I use the same thing. Do you? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what there's yeah. two if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Or you could get that um, architecture, yeah, yeah, a lot. that yellow paper, right? Or that alphabet paper I love because right. then the alphabet has the grid on it. That's the best one, I think. It's stronger. Right. Right, right. But mostly what I love to do is trace clothes and copy them. So like if I'm, I, you were, you said it was a sewing show. So I grabbed some things I made, you know, I just like yes. to pick some, something that already fits someone and trace it. That's it. <laughs> it gives me a lot more power and then I can just change something on it. So this is something I made for my daughter once, but you know, I, I traced a dress that already fit her, you know, yeah. oh. that's, that's beautiful. I love that color to it. I, see, I like things that are different. You know, I'm all, I laugh, you know, when I talk about the things that I do. I love the Franken pattern because I don't like to just think <laughs> out the box. I really, I mean, together, I don't, it's not because I don't want anybody to see me, but I just like different. I think, you know, it's very rare to get something out of the box and just out of the, the pattern envelope and just make it like it is, you know? It's always something. That's like being creative. Yeah. I know because that's the that's what I love is that everyone I think we can't help putting our own touch. We like to see the soul in the clothes. I think we crave that, especially after a day at the mall, you know. Nothing's got a personal touch to it. But when you make your own little decisions, you know, exactly. choosing exactly. a fabric or putting a little hand detail somewhere makes it sacred. That's how I feel. About you built, you made um, <laughs> prints as well on fabric, haven't you, Laura? Because I thought I, I thought I saw you do one one day. You see lovely. me? You see me do it? Yeah, you I, did one of the sketches. Yeah, it was so much fun. I, I would, but I never actually created a fabric design, so I'm a total <laughs> fake. No, so I like I oh, can no. create. No, no, but like I I don't know how to like I make ideas for prints. Like I I love this, but that doesn't yeah, repeat. Right. This yeah. is cool. I did this with um watercolor and crepas. But like it's fun to make ideas like that, but they don't repeat, you know, they don't match up yeah. like a tile. Now I know how to do that creatively on paper, but I've never made it into fabric. That's what spoon flower is all about. We have to have like a spoon flower club <laughs> and see if we can make some of our own fabric. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. We can talk to Tim Gunn. How about that? I like we. I think <laughs> talk to Tim. Alicia, you have to have a Franken pattern show. I just love that name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that term will blow away somewhere. <laughs> you know, you pick up terms. I did. I promise you, I didn't make it up. Oh, you didn't. Okay. <laughs> it makes sense. It, it makes a lot of. It's a little scary, but it makes a lot of sense. Ah. Okay, I, got, I see a question right. here. Can I, Laura, how do you teach people to draw that can't draw a stick figure? You know that I hear that like all the time. You know, it's either I can't draw a straight line or I can't draw a stick figure. And honestly, that's what I'm very, very passionate about because I never drew until I went to school. Like I used to doodle. So I would make like little squiggles during math class, you know, and they would relax me and I'd like color them in and, you know, that's what I would do all day, right? So it didn't look like anything, but it gave me pleasure. But I didn't think I would be able to draw anything that was real. But I think what happens is, I always say this, I guess I'll say it now, I'll get on my box, is that people, <laughs> um, we, our culture, because I studied music together, and it's like a really interesting philosophy. Our culture is extremely focused on language and writing. So when we start drawing, we approach it like the alphabet, you know, circle, line, and we like, we expect to have perfect lines that are symbols for things, but art is not writing. And we have to let ourselves get really messy and really loose and, and almost like, like we're working with clay on paper. Like we have to make it a form before we come back to skinny little lines that are cute. So like, 
You know, you end up with lines, but before you get to lines, there's a whole mess that you need to allow yourself to make, I think. Like, these are lines, but I don't start with the lines. It's like all the thought behind the lines comes from the, the most powerful thing I learned in my first year of school was we'd draw and then we'd smudge the whole thing up with our hand and just like get loose and get free from that perfect line. You have to let yourself have a process of breaking down and then building up out of that mess. So, and that's more than even learning to draw. It's a, it's a journey inside. And then it's something you have forever. You like the imperfection of drawing. Yes, Teresa. So I believe that, can you hear me? I hear like a static. I believe you need a safe space to, un, to fall apart in with your art skill and then build yourself up, you know? Because at first we're just so scared that it's like, if we can't make that one perfect line, we're heartbroken. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why it's 15 awesome. weeks. Everybody says, oh, if you do an online course, you should really do something brief and to the point, like a four week or whatever. But I've been spoiled all these years teaching at the university to have 15 weeks. And in 15 weeks, if you stick with it, which you have to kind of when you're in school, but if you yeah. stick with it, you get this whole arch of like, you know, experiences that bring you to, they all come together at the end. Um, yeah, I think it's really important, Laura. Like when I saw your class, I, I was entirely excited because on my blog and with my sewing, I think it'll help both things. Like, especially, you know, this is a sewing show. So you think, well, well how is illustration, besides the fact that you make some lovely clothing, how is illustration important? <laughs> well, often if you're making your own designs, oh, your own designs mm -hmm. actually drawing that can be so tricky. And when I draw it and then I don't get the details right and I don't, I, I'm not confident in either and I don't want to show it to people. And I'm hoping mm -hmm. like, through, you know, I can draw it, it'll be quicker, it'll look better. And then that'll, in the end, help me be a better sewer too, because I'll, I'll, you know, draw those details on the welt pockets or whatever, instead of just. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, because if you've made it with your hands, you can, you're even better, if perfection is overrated. Oh, I didn't see the comments over there. It's great. Yeah. You know, you're drawing something you've made yourself. It's like you you really know it here. I think you just got to build up the um, relationship between what you have here and, and what's here. You know? yeah. <laughs> it's the mind, the hand, and the eye. And it, that's the thing. It's like a triangle, and it takes some time for them all to come together. Just like when you learn sewing and you learn, let's say, um, pattern making, but you, you don't – they seem like totally separate for a while before they start to, or draping and pattern making before they come together. But so you have to have a lot of faith when you start out and commitment. I think that's one thing, but in the craftsy class, it's very practical. So like on my homepage to my website too, in the sidebar, there's a link to the craftsy class and my craftsy class is, is very short and to the point and um, very much about sketching out your own, your designs, you know, easily. They really oh. made me, you know, break oh. it down so simply. Oh. Yeah. And I think, oh, I miss Alethea. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I heard her, but I can't see her cute face. Yeah. I can't see you, Alethea. Maybe. Would you mind refreshing, maybe? The more imperfect, the more original. I like that. Teresa the same. It says something about internet. I don't know if she knows she's on audio or... Yeah, just or if she does audio. So this is something simple like just shapes without details, you know. Yeah. But let's say you had just one dress you made that you love and you wanted to explore like a hundred different ways to embroider on it. You know, you could just color on it over and over and over and over again. I mean, how do you do your illustrations? You work digitally a lot, right? Do you start with yes. a hand drawing? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of the times if I have to build up like a, a body because I'm not a natural illustrator like yourself, I take forever making one and then I illustrate on top of that one a lot. Um, it just, yeah, so I, I'd like to be able to just like kind of 
throw it down so I, then I can spend more time sewing too, you know? <laughs> and, and that's the point, just to get it out of here and just out, period. So um, if it's stuck in there, it just stays there. So I don't know. I think Alethea for sure was there once. I did a scope a long, long time ago about a designer called Claire McArdle from the 50s. And oh, we yeah. were looking at all, you know, and it was all her dresses with showing like the grain and the bias and all these armholes and stuff. But I've seen her sketchbooks because I guess she went to Parsons and they have some of her books in the library. And her drawings were like extremely simple line drawings. You know, they didn't, they weren't really? like fashion illustration. Oh, yeah. They were like, they were all similar and there were hundreds of them, but they were pretty like, hang on, you know, they were pretty like, <laughs> really straight they were notes mental notes oh, wow. you no know? oh, wow. so i think a lot of people design on you know you make a shell you put it on and then you might like think oh i want the collar to be wider uh, maybe i'll add here i wanted to ask you guys do you guys use these because i have a pattern does anyone need a stuffed arm like do any of you ever use an arm to try stuff on? anyone in the comments so, need a stuffed arm <laughs> I, yes. I, I found this the we other day. A, I, I I wonder um, if you can. Hmm. We do have a yes if you see over in the <laughs> comments, Laura. Yeah, look, I see. Okay, I see that yes. No. Good, because I have a pattern, but I don't know how to share something like that because it's big. You know, and you just make Go it. Go for the actual pattern. Yeah, I'd like to share that with the group because I think anyone who has a mannequin, it can be helpful. Like if you were making um like a dolman sleeve or something. Or even a set. Oh, that'd be fabulous, wouldn't it? So I thought that was something I could share because I have the pattern, but I don't know. Has anyone else shared patterns before? How do you? They're bigger than the scanner, you know. What do you do? Yeah, uh, I did. I make my dress. Yeah, <laughs> it's a gorgeous dress. We were telling her earlier that she should uh, take a full length picture of it and put it in the Perry Crafter website. I will, so I that we can. When I first found the group, I was going to put this one up once because someone had shared a caftan dress that she had made from an Ankara fabric. Thank you. It was like, there's nothing I love better. I, I think that fashion should be easy. You know, a caftan is like a square, right? And you can like cut out a neck. And then what can you do? You know, you can like give a little shape here or there and then put it on like I think it's so exciting to design that way. So if I get yards of some beautiful fabric, I'll just fold it in half in two layers. So I have a front and a back and then start cutting out a neck and cut out based on my measurement. I mean, this is a lousy drawing, but <laughs> you know what I mean? this is a big square, but I fold it in the middle. So this one, what I wanted to do was, it was just a square and I just shaped yep. the waist, but up top, I used every last bit of fabric. It's just one piece <laughs> to make the biggest circular flare I could. But it's still it's just a cookie yeah. cutter. And no, it right? looks fabulous. Okay. I think the print works really well with the flare. It really does. It like Oh, because yeah, it's, it's round. You're right. I didn't think about the circles with the circles. I will share that yeah, and in even the group. Cuz Oh, that would be great. I love um I love African fabric. Ever African fashion. Ever since I was in Paris, I was like, oh, and they always had a lot of really big shoulders, and I just love. It makes you feel so girly. And I always got you hooked on it in Paris. Yes, I went to Paris one year for to Parsons Paris. In they had a school in Paris, and uh, when I got there, I thought, oh, I'll get to find out what that's all about, the couture. And we did. We visited those stores. And we also saw a lot of the Japanese avant-garde that was there at that time, like Yoji Yamamoto and Isemiyaki. Oh, we saw those. Sweet. But for me, the most exciting thing was Af the African fashion. No one told me that was going to be there, you know. The women everywhere yeah. with these prints, all walking together, all different prints. My eyes were like, oh, oh. and the head wraps, all different. <laughs> and see, that's what excites me, like a head wrap. That's not even a pattern. You don't even sew it. You sculpt it on your head. Like, that's so cool. I like clothes with options. Yeah. yeah. That you can option, you can create them when you put them on. You know, I like that. Yeah, Red more active, active, in, you all, active role. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. What was that, Alethea? Can you all hear me or can you see me? 
We no. can hear you. I can't perfect. see. Can yeah, see your voice is very face. clear. <laughs> we can't see your beautiful face. Right now. Right now. Oh, now I can't hear you. I can see me on my phone real good. You I can? can see you all. I'm not sure what's going on. But I'll give you some props anyway. <laughs> How does that? <laughs> How do you do that? You click anywhere on her square, and it gives you can see your little face. <laughs> it's so cute. That's fun. Yeah. Okay, I can. Well, does anyone have any other questions for Laura? And are there any brave souls that would even like to jump in the box and ask her a question, or talk about uh, one of their experiences using sketching with draw, uh, sewing, or sewing in general? Or even sewing with patterns. And yes, all good. Oh, yeah. come on, girls. <laughs> oh, hey. Oh, hey, Doc. I hit, the, I hit the, I thought I hit the button. Can you hit the button to let her in, Alethea? Okay, hang on. I'm trying. I'm still trying to come back up. Okay. Don't go <coughs> away. We do want to talk to you. You know I what have else? no idea why that won't work. Sorry? No, I was just thinking of something that's interesting um, that I was thinking about today before we did this was that since I was in school, um, aesthetics have changed so much in fashion. So we used to be like so careful like, when we hemmed something, we'd put like interfacing in the hem and we'd hem it by hand. And in the past few years, have you noticed how many things have raw cut edges and like, oh, yeah. It, the rules aren't as strict for everything to be finished to death everywhere. So like this just has a serger on the edge, like the little rolled hem thing. Oh, what's that? Materials needed for the class? I can go over that. I don't want to change the subject. I'm trying to let um, her in the box. Alethea, can you see? We have someone. I can see her. Uh, underneath her name, does it say show callers? Can you click that button? I actually made her a host trying to get her in. I was trying everything. <laughs> One point it said to uh, allow, and I clicked on allow, so I'm not sure what happened from that point on. But Aww. oh, I wonder, should, have you tried go off and come back on? Yeah, what I might yeah. try, um, I might lock. Oh yeah, the seat's locked, and then if we oh. lock it and then open it, maybe. Oh, there she there is. She is. Hi, hello. Wait, she's oh, no. frozen. Maybe she's like loading, you know? Do they load in, sort of? Maybe. Just hoping she can come on. It'd be lovely to chat with her. Oh, Alicia's yeah. back! <laughs> yes! She's in black and white, sort of, too. It's very moody. I like it. It's very yeah. moody. <laughs> <laughs> she put some fancy so, fashion filter on. Maybe you want to She's experiencing what I did last week. Yes. <laughs> oh, um, maybe while we're waiting to see if she can come on, uh, you could tell us, Laura, um, is there one particular thing you like to sew the most, like dresses or oh, yeah. trousers? Um, I love doing things. I've noticed more than anything is doing something like the day of. I love, because otherwise I don't finish things. So like this I did on a birthday. My favorite thing has been on birthdays for kids. This is a birthday kid dress. <laughs> this is the birthday kid dress that I think I posted in a group once. But because in the moment you you start and and you gotta finish it and you keep getting ideas and you just throw them on there. If I plan too much on anything, I kill it. That's just I've noticed. <laughs> so anything that I do um where I kind of sit down, like I said, I like to fold the fabric in half and just start cutting into it. Most of all, you can't get always as fitted when you work that way, but I like to feel free. I like to feel like um, like I have room to make it up as I go. That's something that makes me really happy. And then I have to finish it by four o'clock. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to sew. I love beautiful prints. And I've always loved these Hi, prints. Isla. Hi. We're trying to get, right? We almost have a guest. 
I used to do a lot of origami when I was a kid. So I like crisp cottons. You could see that. And if they're patterned, that reminds me of origami paper, too. Oh, someone can't see um, me now? I can't see you either, Laura. Um, if you can hit up in the top uh, by your browser bar, there's that little circle with the arrow, the refresh button. Sometimes mm -hmm. if you hit the refresh button, your face will come back the next time. I don't have one of those in Chrome. Okay. I only have that when oh. I'm in Safari. Should I just press return and reload the page? I can Maybe give it. it a go. Okay. Here's it's fabulous seeing you as well. <laughs> Now, Doc to um, B, um, I'm not sure what oh, your name is. I've seen you a lot on um, the Perry Crafters, but what's your first name? Oh no, now I can't hear. Her. Can you hear? Can you hear her? I I can't hear. Oh no! Hear. Did I come back? Back up. Can you all see me now? I can see and hear you beautifully. I can hear you too. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Unfortunately, I can't hear our new guest. Um, Alethea, what's our guest's name? Isla. Hi, Isla. How does that work? It's very nice to meet you. Hi. It's too bad we can't hear you. Um, <gasps> can anyone else hear hear her? I can't hear. What happened with Don? <laughs> uh, Laura. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can. Hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we almost hear Isla? No. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a question or did you want to just tell us something? Oh, I, I just had a question. Um, I have uh, ability to draw like a snail. So, which is <laughs> And mm -hmm. um, I can usually get it in my head. And I use a croquet sometimes mm -hmm. which helps a little bit mm -hmm. but if you, you have, have to add to sure. onto the body it's really bad so um, how do you perfect the garment I, I, I know it's in my head I can get it on paper but if I was to give it to an illustrator oh uh -oh. you're giving if you were to give it to an illustrator after she makes it, I wonder if she can hear me. I wonder if she wants she wants to give it to an illustrator to draw it up after she makes oh, it. Yeah. Oh, now she can't hear me. Oh, you can. I can't hear you. Okay. She can hear her. So, if I had a piece of paper over her. Um, definitely a straight girl is best for designing. Because like the first designer I worked for, she used a croquis. I was like, what? They never told us about that in school. We had to draw everything freehand. But croquis was like, you know, like this or something. But when it's posed, all the details, you know, they get scrunched on one side. They get stretched on the other side. It's a lot more complicated. If it's all neat and clear, you can totally just zoom in on the design of the darn garment, you know? And isn't that what we're so excited about? For some people, no. For some people, we are, like, I'm kind of obsessed with, like, you know, dancing. <laughs> but, 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 you know, getting specific about the garment itself, you know, everyone has their place. There's, like, a whole spectrum of ways to approach design. But you should have at least a croquis that is not distorted so that you can translate it into reality, right? <clears throat> Something that relates either to your body or your client's body. So I try to teach how to make a body and then how, how to add to it. So you can adjust it to wherever you need. You know, bigger bust, wider shoulders, wider hip, whatever. <clears throat> yes? All right, thanks, Isla. <laughs> so in the class, well, we learn to actually draw figures or draw garments or both. So the way this class is, it is like a big, this 15-week thing. First thing we'll do is learn to draw, which is but by drawing the body. So you're going to learn to draw and draw bodies at the same time. So I'll give you some drawing skill. You see that in the first week. And then we'll start applying that to, to bodies. And 
it seems so overwhelming, but we simplify it. And then we realize there's only so many ways you can make a body on a piece of paper anyway. Like, you just got to apply. You got to try it and then keep improving it. But, okay, so after we draw the figures, then we start doing, like, a technical drawing thing. So some of it's about shape. And some of it's about, like, you don't see here at all. Um, well, you do see um, seam lines and darts, gathers, pleats. Those are, like, the foundations, right? Flares, gathers, and pleats. <clears throat> and all the different, getting used to the, like, foundations of those. Then we, oh, did someone lose my face? Yes, oh, God, you're excited. So, if we, and that's the thing is we're going to do the body. We're going to do technical details. Even some really specific ones like um, hooks and just building your vocabulary, breaking it down. And then we're going to create a series of sketches that are all like from a, in a theme. So even if they're not, oh, wow. old, <clears throat> you know, so these are all the same. I took like three fabrics and dressed all the girls in different outfits from the fabrics, you know, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so that you're like, um, it's just so exciting to make a group. I just think that's awesome. And to let your idea flow, 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 flow within one mood for a while is just, it's so exciting. It's scary. I'm sorry. <laughs> and my whole point, you're scared, right? Well, you don't have to go all the way. If you went halfway, you'd get the technical drawing. You know, the crafty class is just the technical drawing. And no, it, this is maybe, it should be like maybe in, inspiring, but I don't want it to be terrifying. But I break all the steps down and um, you're scared too. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to give everyone the whole, the whole thing because <clears throat> there's no need you should have to go to a school like that to get all that. You know, to be able to do it on your own time. It's scary. And that's my job. I'm a doula, too. So I'm here to be your um, your drawing doula. <laughs> when you're getting scared, and you're getting all freaked out, you're supposed to reach out. No grade. Thank you. Who oh. said that? No grades. And you don't have to. Sh yeah. That <laughs> if you had to grade on something like this, I would probably be in the doghouse. Oh, I don't <laughs> <laughs> this is oh my Jesus. You know the point. Is, I can't. There's oh, it's beautiful. oh that's great. It's beautiful. No, but this is what I want to tell everybody. Do you see? You don't see a head. You don't see arms or anything, right? Well, so, at least this is the kind of stuff I do. But I would encourage everybody. to Doing figures, and I would always take notes of what I wanted, you know, because I can't draw like that. I can't. I could do what I can do, but I could try to make notes, notes so that you know. It's beautiful. Well, you know, but I want to do the head and the pose and the figures, and you know, I want the whole shebang. You don't need the, like I said. There's that whole spectrum because you don't need to draw at all. You know, or you could go all the way, you know, to the illustration, blah, blah, blah. or you could just illustrate without any detail, or you could sketch, like you said, no arms, no head, but your design is there. <laughs> it depends what you need it for. So there's this whole, this whole spectrum of what you're using it for and what you want from it. But definitely drawing is a, it's a language. Nice. So without doing it, it doesn't grow. So every time you do it, it's growing. And it's amazing how shy you were to share it because that was so beautiful. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh -huh. yeah. And there's a big power in that when you start to share. Ah, wait, it's it's big power. That's my blog. <laughs> To be honest, I don't I don't post articles constantly because I'm so busy trying to do other like Periscope and all the other social media I'm doing. But there are a lot of articles on there, and I do put articles up. 
but there's all my, my crafty classes there, my courses there, and all the articles that are there are a resource. There's croquis on there. There's illustrations, um, sign up info. And, um, you know, I won't, there's my book. That was an oh, interesting yeah. thing. I don't have my book here because I can't afford it right now. <laughs> I have the um, the Russian copy, but it's called The Language of God. <laughs> Russian did hardcover. I was so excited. But this, <laughs> this book was a lot of fun because I got to go back and rediscover a lot of my former students who were doing awesome things. And I got a lot of their work in there. But at the same time, there are a lot of people graduating from these big fancy schools who aren't excited about what they're doing. And I think you just got to be excited wherever you are. You know? Well, and you know what, Laura, talk about that. <clears throat> a lot of people go to school, they get school education, but then come away not even working in that field. So talk about the fact that you know, this is something not because you know somebody else do it, not because they know you. They spend a lot of money going to school. So this goes two ways. It's interesting. One is that I, I teach in AAS. Well, no, I used to teach in BFA, which is four years. And um, I've had several run-ins with students. And, of course, you know, it goes a lot of different ways. But quite a few students from that program who they have the astronomical loans and then they, they're they forced into a job where they just have to take it so they can pay their New York rent and pay off their loan and they cannot believe what they're doing. And they're shocked by the realities of the industry. Then you have, yeah. I mean, I saw a Periscope once where one of my friends who teaches in BFA was talking to of her graduates from BFA two years after they graduated and they were like, What's BFA, sorry, Laura? Bachelors of Fine Arts and Fashion Design. Yeah. So that's a four-year. And after a few years, they had me teaching in the two-year program. And these people are all like, they already have a degree in something else, or they're going, you know, it, it's less of a money investment. And most of the students are more mature because they're not straight out of high school. They've lived in the world. I, I'm, I have a lot of weird thoughts about the schooling system, you know, I, I'm not always such a fan of it. So I think that life experience and, and not giving yourself all that debt, but getting skills and being hungry for them and then going to use them is the best way to go. I mean, well, I'm trying to think of what I had wanted to say. Oh, oh, <laughs> and that the school systems in general and the way they're structured I never realized I was never a rebel until after <laughs> um, that I never learned in school anything entrepreneurial and I never learned to speak up for myself. It was always, oh, yes, I'll rip it out and I'll do it again. Oh, yes, I'll do it again. And, and you can't go out into the world like that. A young woman is just like, oh, yes, oh, yes, especially not in New York City. You know, I'm so I'm still like trying so hard to stick up for myself. And I teach like 99% women for 20 years at Parsons. And when I think how much more I could support them. So I give them there, I'm supposed to give them all these skills. I give them all these skills, but there's so much more to our lives than only our career. You know, my first job lasted three months at Old Navy and I was like 65 hours a week. How are we not going to do sweatshops if we're treating ourselves that way anyway? You know, it's got to start in the right. schools right. or not even in right. the schools. Like now, right. it's, it's, Places it's, a, like, yeah. oh, I missed that. Alita. No, I'm saying, you, you know, it's going to start uh, in the schools, start with venues like this, teaching and sharing. You know, we can't have sweatshops. How we're built, you know, to just and you get a little bag. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's why I'm so excited. Very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. And so we have such a disconnect with fashion, right? The, the glamour and the reality. 
And when I see Perry Crafters, I see people making their own clothes. And when I see that people, we, we have a niche market. We can do something original, share it with the world on a small scale, make a living, thrive. You know, we don't have to be the CEO of Gap Incorporated and like take over the planet. There's a whole <clears throat> new world breaking open. And I guess, you know, here on Blab and everything where it's being born in us. It's really exciting. Yeah, it's great. That there's a, a community out there that supports people who want to be creative. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's not all about money and how far you're going to get, but about creating something that you're proud of and you enjoy and talking with ladies and, and gentlemen, I suppose, that are that are interesting. Yeah. Well, once you have a student loan that you're like terrified of, oh, I love the comment <laughs> here. Thing. When you're like, you know, you become, it's kind of an indentured servitude. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't speak up. I can't speak up. I got to do whatever because I got to survive, you know? So I think that whole setup is kind of falling apart. And I'm so excited to be a part of that. <laughs> like, I, I know that schools can be great too for many things, but. I'm so excited about this information being for everybody and our voices coming forward, our bodies coming forward, you know? I mean, I, I have teachers teaching my students to draw these figures I don't understand. Guys teaching my girl students to draw girls that will never, ever, they're not even just a little tall and skinny, you know? They're like, and I just think that's so deep. That's so deep. It is. We know it is. <laughs> yeah. But we can use our, we all, we all have um, talents and skills that we can grow. We don't have to be there to do it, you know. And likewise, I think some of my students probably are working on a portfolio to get into a school. And that's great, too, because, you know, everyone has a path. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, what, Lauren, you know what, this is a blessing for so many people. People, oh, people, thank you. People, 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 you know, step to help bring out what's in us to, to the next level. And I kind of need to but what I do encourage people to do is find the gift within. You know, there's a <laughs> thing that you can get from your job, but you can never get fired from the gift that's inside of you. You know, you, you find posted the gift, that find today. Well, we this week, but you find what's in you, and you always find you need. You'll always be taken care of because if you're doing what you love to do. You're satisfied mm -hmm. with it. And you know what I'm saying? Your bill is in you. It's built to make you produce and reproduce. You know, yeah. and that's successful. Success is not all about money, which you can make right. <laughs> If you go outside of yourself trying to, you're not going to be successful at it. You got to to uh, study on what's in you to do, and I think that's where we, that's where we grow up. That's where we become successful as we want to be. You know, but I. Uh, Things outside, outside. I mean, you're seeing more and more people in their later years of life switching gears, changing lanes, you know, because they're not happy, you mm -hmm. know, and I don't care how making, they're not happy because it was never in them to do that. They were either made to do it or they did it because it was a quick, uh, quick income or. Mm -hmm. To do right now, that's the end thing to do. But if we teach our kids, even now, even at this age, you know, teach them what's in them, show them to learn to look within mm -hmm. inside and start on that, you know. Use you your voice. Be, yeah, you can't help but be successful. It's like it's like blowing on a little coal, right? You just <laughs> yeah. get redder and redder. Right. Yeah, because I, I know myself before I was processed by the school. I mean, maybe it's part of just a young woman coming into her own, but like my dreams got all weird because the system was so weird. Um, 
all my dreams kind of went over this way because of the it was a fearful, competitive vibe. And that's why when I'm in Perry Crafters and everyone's like, this is my skirt. <laughs> Look at my dress. I'm wearing what I made. You know, I'm like, oh, I remember this. This is good. This is good. This is what it's about. Look. Look. You know? And um, something went wrong there in school where it was like everyone was so afraid of not whatever. And I noticed that my students are very much will be like, Oh, I'm so sorry. I fell behind. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Oh, this is so bad. Don't look. I'm like, no, no, no. That's why we're doing this. You can just stop. <laughs> just stop <laughs> with all that. And when you feel good and you're ready, you can go look at that video and do that sketch and load it into the class. It's okay. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? As fast or as slow as you need to. I mean, some people like a fire under their butt, you know, but yeah, that's definitely your job. <laughs> yeah, your drawing, your drawing is beautiful. Alethea, what did you use? A brush pen or something? Yeah, that's good. I what use that. I use a pencil or pen, whatever closest to me. <laughs> <laughs> it looks I'm very telling. dramatic. No, it's very generic. <laughs> uh -huh. Whatever. Was not I, mean, I could be in a restaurant. I could be in a grocery store. I might take a pack of a, a stub or a, a tissue paper. You know, if I am and the thought comes to me, I just to yeah. Whenever I can't draw out the lines, I just write it in so I know, you know, what I want. And so I that's what I encourage people to do. Do it till you can get there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. It's not generic though, but at all. But every step that you take, every time you sit down and draw, you're, you keep moving along that line to where you want to be. You do because right. as you're judging yourself, there, that can be good or bad. That can be like that can like tear you down, so you don't want to draw anymore, or it can pull you towards where you want to go. So if you That's could just. Good yeah, like a rubber band. I was scoping about it the other day. If you're a little unhappy with it, just know that whatever that is, you're like, you know, every time you draw, you're self-correcting in a way. Oh, thanks, Dueling right. uh, Design. Dawn. <laughs> Thank you, Dawn. I always call you Dueling Design on Paris. So. <laughs> yeah, there's no hurry. I know people have lives. I expect you to have lives. So it's not like I'm just keeping it open. And I don't usually keep it so open like I did for you guys where it all shows up at once, but I did. So you can skip around too. So you might find that you just go to like the, the technical week and hang out there for a few months. You know, you don't have to, but I, I did design them in order, but you know, you can always go backwards. I'm looking forward to starting. Yay. This is addictive, this blab stuff, except I blab a lot. <laughs> you know, with people like you and Dawn, you know, you have these challenges, you challenge yourself each month to create a new design with just fabric. You know, I guess, well, you let your viewers choose the fabric, right? You let your, your viewers choose what fabrics to use for that particular design. And you, you <laughs> design, right? Yeah, sometimes it, sometimes I choose a button and, and I might choose the uh, the fabrics and then they choose the design and other times I choose the the pattern that I'm gonna make and then let them choose the fabrics. I just mix it up. Luckily, luckily there's no rules. Like that's what I love about it. I'm not the boss because it's not a business, but I, I I get to decide what I do. So one month I want to do athletic wear, it's athletic wear. Next month I want to do a ball gown. I could do a ball gown. So, <laughs> although wow. I, Need half of Alethea's brain in my head to do something that fancy. <laughs> Alethea, that's what you showed us on ball game. What's that? Yeah. Um, what was it? That was gorgeous. I can't get my. <laughs> I'm trying to. Get... Okay. That's beautiful. It's it's in proportion yeah. too. That's hard to do freehand. It's very See, hard to do. Very hard. That's why a lot of people so, use a croquis because 
You have to think exactly. so hard to keep it in proportion. When you can see, see one, this one, I don't know if you can see, you can't see that one very well. Uh huh. <laughs> but well, we, we don't have to actually go off camera now, but we're getting close to the hour. So, what I'll do is yeah. I can stop recording, and then if people want to talk or come in, they can stay. But if you want to go, you can. If we keep it to like the hour, then. then right, it's almost. Okay, wait. It's choppy. Am I choppy? Yeah, now you. Choppy. Oh, okay. Well, we'll keep, we'll keep chatting, but that'll be the, the, the proper show. So I'll, I'll stop it and record it. Hopefully, it won't sound so choppy. <laughs> Thank you so, so much next, for having me. I was just going to say next week we have Andrea from Sewing to Fit and uh, yeah. the fitting expert. Entirely excited. <laughs> yeah, very excited. So to fit. So yes, seven thirty next Tuesday, and uh, we're not going anywhere. But we're just gonna stop hitting record for our hour mark. So thanks for everyone for tuning in. Thank you.